So we see buttons like this all the time, right? Where you get these button things like this, they're different colors and all of that. So I've set up a button here and some links that all have classes to make them look like buttons. And the normal way to do it is by setting up a button class and then you get these like modifiers where you're setting the different colors. So you only have to make the button once and then you just modify it as you go. And I've seen the same thing, but instead of writing teal here and teal here, you'll use a custom property and all of that. And that's all fine and dandy, but I want to explore an even better way to do it. But instead of it looking like this, we can do some fun effects with it too. With this, we're going to be exploring custom properties as well as transforms, transform origin, and we're going to be having some fun with it. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials like this one, where we explore the wonders that are CSS and how we can write better CSS by simplifying things and taking advantage of modern CSS to be able to do it. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in, and here we go. I'm in CodePen right now, and as I said, we have our three divs there, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna delete you, I'm gonna delete you, and I'm going to delete you right here as well. And you're going to see why in a second. And we're going to fix our hovers and all of that um, as well. So what we're going to do here is I've declared a color and I've declared a border. And right now I put inherit just so um, whatever. It doesn't matter why I could have just written black and it would have worked fine. But what I'm actually going to do is put a custom property and it's going to be an undefined one. If you look through this file, you'll see there's no root. There's no custom properties uh, declared anywhere. And I'm just going to call it btn color. And in my BTN color, I'm also going to give it a fallback of a black. And then we're going to do the same thing here. And uh, where we have a border that's two pixels solid. And we then get our BTN border, our BTN color, which defaults to black. And because these are undefined variables, it means that if it can't find it, it will use this color instead. Now, instead of having to worry about defining my border color and my color, I can just say BTN color is teal. And that first one will switch over to teal. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so there you go. And so then we can actually take the same thing here where we have our background switching. We're going to do something more fun than having backgrounds in a minute. But I could also switch this over to being a um, var btn color. And then that's going to work exactly the same way. So we're not really winning too much here, but it is working. Um, but we have our teal. So let's just copy this. And then we could have another one there, there, this one can be purple. And then this one over here can be my fire brick red and all my buttons are working and everything is looking great. And I think that's such a nice way to do it. And again, if this, let's just change this just so you can see. So instead of black as my default on these, now this could actually default to another custom property that is in your root if you have some. So you could do that instead of just putting in a random color here. Let's just make it a uh, lime green for the moment. And I should have done both, but there we go, lime green. So just so you see, if I don't declare one on the button, it's going to turn to the lime green color. And now it's switched over. Same thing here. We can make them all lime green. So that's the default they'll come in with. And if we want to overwrite it, we can overwrite it. And I think that's really nice and cool. So that's a nice first step that we can do uh, when it comes to theming things is setting certain things up like this with these fallback values. And you can do this for anything, not just for colors. And it can be really useful. And especially here because my color and my border are both using that value. So it makes it really nice. So if I update it once, it does it for both of them. And of course, my, my hover color here is also being affected by that. So again, I only have to change it here. And so this purple, let's just change my teal here to red. And we're going to see that by changing this one value, the button is changed. The border has changed, the color has changed, and the background has changed. So, so powerful. And so we'll team that ter turn, turn can't speak, we'll turn that back to teal. And because that's so powerful, we can actually get rid of all of this here. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. I could do all of that now just by having it here. And this should be my button hover and my uh, BTN focus. But that means here we're changing my color and we don't have to do an individual one for all of them. Then we can just say that my background here is my var btn color. And we have one selector or one rule, I should say. And that one rule is going to work for all of them. If I spell color the way I spelled it in my custom property that had me worried. There we go. So you can see we've just eliminated a whole bunch of CSS and we can just set it up like that with one rule here instead of having to have one for each color along the way. So this here is controlling everything. So, so nice. And <laughs> you know, it just cleans things up so much, makes things so much more maintainable. I love it so very much. And we can even take this a step further instead of having these types of hover effects like this. Um, let's come in and just say that BTN 
after, because you know I love pseudo elements. So on my BTN after, let's give this a content property because we need content on a pseudo element. Let's give it a position, position, position of absolute. And if that's absolute, I do think I already have, I have a position relative already on my main button, so that's good. So position absolute, and then we can give this a background of, actually we can just copy this right here. Uh, and actually let's turn this off because we don't want the hover to be there. We're gonna be sort of taking advantage of this. So let's, we can actually steal this. Let's just grab that, put it here instead. Um, so my background is there and with the position absolute, I can do an inset of zero, which is going to set them all. There we go. So we can see them and now if I hover, uh, oh, we also want a Z index of zero, uh, negative one just to push it backward. And now we should see my text be able to show up on these. Oh, you know what? I took this whole rule off when I didn't want to take the whole rule off. I just want to take this off here. Ha, there we go. That works a little bit better. Um, one thing with this negative Z index here, when you do that, it might push things too far back. Um, and that's why if you do go look at my code uh, in the code pen on my button, I also have, I have my position relative, but I also have an isolation of isolate, which creates a new stacking context. So if I turn that off, now those colors are actually disappearing behind this white background. So there's different, I could just give this a Z index too, but isolation isolate, it creates a new stacking context. So the new stacking context means that it can't, that pseudo element, which is a child of my button, it can't escape outside of this anymore. So the negative one is go behind all the content that is inside of this. And I guess instead of that, I guess I probably could have just used uh, a before maybe instead of an after, but whatever, uh, I'm not even sure, but I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, cause it's working and I'm happy and we learned something new along the way if you didn't know that already. So useful lesson. Um, so that's good, but obviously we need to see our text all the time. So what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to do a transform of scale and we're going to do a zero comma zero, just like that. And I'm going to be transitioning this. So we're going to do a transition of transform, transform 300 milliseconds and we'll just do an ease. E should be fine. And I'm choosing 300 because I used 300 on my color transition too. And we could take this background one off. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm gonna choose the 300. You could even use that as a custom property as well if you wanted to, because then you could update both values at once. Um, so we get that. Now I need that to come in. So now we can say that my dot BTN after a uh, hover first, BTN hover after. And then we can do a transform scale one comma one, so it's fully sized. And now if we go and look, ooh, look at that. That's kind of fun, right? That's cool. Uh, I like that a lot. And you'll see that the colors are already the right colors because we have the background here as BTN color. So I don't have to define a different color for each one. I just have to define it once here. It's looking at this. This is looking at the custom properties that I've declared over here and it just works. It's magical. And so that's already kind of cool, but let's take this a step further. And this is one area where you would have to, you know, if you had these different ones, uh, you just need a new selector for it. And I guess you could even uh, come up with a way, you know what, could we? We could do this. I just thought of this on the fly, but this is going to be fun. <laughs> Let's do here a trans, uh, we'll do it under my transform. I didn't think of this. I was going to do different selectors and we don't have to. Transform origin is going to be a var, um, we'll just call it transform, uh, t origin. Uh, let's just do transform origin, whatever. It doesn't matter. Again, we're just doing this to save a little bit, um, a few lines of code. And here we could keep center as the default. So if we don't have one declared, we could keep our center, but then we could come up to each one of these and we could have our button color. And we could also have our transform origin, uh, which the nice thing with this is custom properties are inherited into their children. So even though I'm declaring this on the button itself, the before is going to inherit this value. So let's just say this is going, this one will be uh, left. This one is going to be a, let's copy it because it's a little long. Transform origin of right, it's just so we can see the difference. So now, woo, that's kind of cool there. And then that one's in the middle. Uh, now we could take this a little bit further and play with this a little bit more if you wanted to, because it's always on right now, I have my scale of zero, zero. So like if I did this as a scale of zero, one, then it's going to look a little bit different. And it's going to do things like this instead and that one goes in the middle. Uh, we could also have this one as a zero and this one as a one. 
and then it would also create a bit of a different effect where it goes up and down. Uh, they're all doing it from the center now. So like in that case, this would be, let's just say top and this one could be bottom. And then, so there it's from the bottom, this one's from the top, and then that one's in the middle. So you play around with that, explore it, maybe even build out a bit more of a robust system here uh, to set it all up so you could control things even with where each one is transforming from, all of that. I just wanted to explore this idea, have some fun making some buttons, but all of these ideas can be taken and explored a lot more than this. And if you're just new to custom properties and you want to learn them really from the ground up, I have a really good playlist here. It starts from ground zero and walks all the way up to manipulating them with JavaScript. And of course, a really big thank you to Zach, Randy, and Stuart, who are my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.